Welcome to Online Worship at Easter Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Steve, and today Pastor Brandon will be continuing us in our series called Beginning Again by looking at the story of Joseph. It's going to be a great time. But before we dive into worship, I just have three announcements for you. First of all, next Sunday, October 4th, we're going to be having communion together in our outdoor worship services. At 9 a.m., the drive-in worship at Easter on the Hill. At 10 a.m., our backyard worship right here at Easter by the Lake. It's a BYOC communion. Bring your own bread, bring your own grape juice, and we'll share in communion together. It's going to be great. Second announcement, free flu shots. It's true. Not this Tuesday, but the next Tuesday, October 6th, from 4.30 to 7.30 p.m. Come to Easter by the Lake right here up in the parking lot. There will be a big tent to make sure that it's a safe environment. And it's free flu shots for anybody, so invite your neighbors. But here's what you need to do. If you go to our website, easter.org, and look at... uh, local partnerships under outreach look under local partnerships and you'll see that there's a registration form if you have that filled out before you come it'll make the process go so much faster and we're inviting you to volunteer at this event because we need people to help expedite the process so you can also find out how to volunteer right there outreach local partnerships free flu shots and finally We have two adult learning opportunities that we'd like to lift up to you. This Tuesday, September 29th at 6.30 p.m. via Zoom, Dr. Mary Hess from Luther Seminary is going to talk us through faith and citizenship. Now, this is happening at 6.30 just before the presidential debates. What a great way to get you in the right mindset to listen. Now, it's not too late to register. Now, if if you'd like to dive a little deeper into that, on Wednesday night, the next couple Wednesday nights after that, we've got a book study on Parker Palmer's book, Healing the Heart of Democracy. You don't have to read the book to be part of this conversation. We're going to lift up different excerpts from Parker Palmer and just dive a little deeper. What a timely subject. And then finally, our mission at Easter is to grow in faith and carry on the work of Jesus Christ. But that begs one simple question. How? How do you grow in faith? And especially during this time of pandemic, sometimes our practices maybe have gotten not so healthy. So next Sunday, I'm going to be offering a one-time webinar at 6.30 Sunday night on how to grow in faith. Just a simple refresher course on the basic practices that maybe will help you get recentered as we enter into this fall season. So come and check all of those things out under Adults, Adult Learning, and Events on our website. All right, that's all of the announcements. Now it's time to worship. Let's take a deep breath and begin. Oh, 
today. God of compassion, in your steadfast love, grant us strength. As you work to renew and restore your people, overcome bitterness with your joy, hatred with love, scarcity with your generosity, suffering with your mercy, and death with life of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Well, good morning, or good afternoon, or good evening, whatever time of day it is that you are watching this video. I am so glad and so thankful that we are worshiping God together. I'm also thankful and happy of our Bible story for today. It is this well-known story of Joseph. My guess is you know and have heard this story before because there have been movies that have been made about this story. There's also this really fun, really awesome musical that has been made about this story, about Joseph. And it's called Joseph and His Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. My family is huge fans, are huge fans of this musical. In fact, when my daughter was, oh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven years old, when I would come home from work m very often, this musical would be on our stereo and she would either be singing on the couch at the top of her lungs or she would be dancing and dancing and dancing in the middle of the room. And as I walked into the room, I would say, oh, it is so good to be home and so good to hear this song. It is one of my favorite songs. 
And my wife would peek around the corner and say, yeah, this is the fourth or fifth time we've heard this song today. It is a huge fan favorite in my house. The really amazing thing about this story is that it follows Joseph from his life as a little boy, a teenage boy, to an old man. And one of the things we hear and see in this story is all of the awful, terrible, no good days that Joseph has. Some really bad days. But we also learn of some of the really amazing and great days that Joseph has. And the thing that stands out is that in all of those days, from the worst to the best, God is always with Joseph. No matter how bad of a day Joseph is having, or no matter how great of a day Joseph is having, God is always with him. And I need to remember this. I need to be reminded of that. I need to know and remember that God is always with me. I need to remember that. Here's a trick that I learned, that I discovered. And the trick is this. There are times when I'm having a really bad day that I will go and grab a rock. And I'll just hold it for a while to remember what that rock means to me. And then I'll put that rock in my pocket. So that every time I grab my keys or grab for some change, my hand will brush up against this rock and it'll remind me of two things. The first, that God is with me. Just like Joseph, God is always with me. And the second thing is that God always loves me. And how cool is it that this rock just happens to be in the shape of a heart? And those two things, that God is with me and that God loves me, I need to hear that every single day. So I'm going to ask you, uh, challenge you to this. Find a rock, nothing too big, um, and either put that on your dresser or put it in your backpack so that every time you see it, every time maybe you brush your hand up against it or even hold it, you are reminded of those two things, that God is with you and that God loves you. Because all of us need to hear that every day, just like Joseph did. Let's pray. Hey God, thank you for being with us and thank you for loving us and remind us that you are with us and that you love us every single day. Amen. Thank you for being with me today. Good luck in finding your rock. Well, good day to you, and welcome back to worship. It's so good to see you. We continue in our sermon series, Beginning Again. Today, we're learning more about Joseph, but there's a lot to catch up on from last week. Last week, we learned about Abraham, and today we jump ahead to Joseph. So what happened since we worshiped last together? Well, remember, at this point in the book of Genesis, God's promise has focused in on one family, that through that family, God is going to bless the world. God zooms in on Abraham and Sarah, remember, they couldn't have children, but all of a sudden they have Isaac. Isaac marries Rebecca. She gives birth to twins, Esau and Jacob. Jacob is a trickster. He tricks Esau out of his birthright and his blessing and then flees for his life. While fleeing for his life, he meets a girl named Rachel at a well and falls in love with her. He works for her father for seven years with the agreement that then he can marry her father's daughter, which he does, only it was the wrong daughter. So Jacob marries Leah because the trickster got tricked. And eventually he works for more years to marry Rachel. Now, Jacob has six kids with Leah, two kids with Leah's servant Zilpah, two kids with Rachel's servant Bilhah, and eventually Joseph and Benjamin with Rachel. So Joseph and Benjamin with Rachel. Now, remember, Rachel is the woman Jacob fell in love with at the well. And the firstborn male is usually the most highly valued. So can you guess which child Jacob favored most? It's Joseph. In fact, Joseph was so much his favorite, there was a Broadway musical written about an amazing Technicolor dream coat that Jacob gave Joseph. Well, actually, we don't know that it was Technicolor, but we do know that it was an amazing garment. And he didn't give it to any of his other kids. 
Do you think Joseph's brothers would have been a little jealous? Well, that's where we pick up with today's reading. Today's reading is from the book of Genesis, chapters 37 and 50. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any of his children, because he was the son of his old age, and he had made him a long robe with sleeves. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Once Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him even more. He said to them, Listen to this dream that I dreamed. There we were, binding sheaves in the field. Suddenly my sheaf rose and stood upright. Then your sheaves gathered around it and bowed down to my sheaf. His brothers said to him, Are you indeed to reign over us? Are you indeed to have dominion over us? So they hated him even more because of his dreams and his words. So you can imagine Joseph's brother's disdain for him. Now, Joseph already has an extravagant gift showing everybody that he's his dad's favorite. But now he comes to them telling them that he's been having dreams where one day all of his brothers will bow down to him. He's going to reign over his brothers. So already they know he's their dad's favorite. But the dreams tell them that he's also God's favorite. So they come up with a plan. The man said, They have gone away. For I heard them say, Let us go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them at Dothan. They saw him from a distance, and before he came near to them, they conspired to kill him. They said to one another, Here comes this dreamer. Come now, let us kill him and throw him into one of the pits. Then we shall say that a wild animal has devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. But when Reuben heard it, he delivered him out of their hands, saying, Let us not take his life. Reuben said to them, Shed no blood. Throw him into this pit here in the wilderness, but lay no hand on him, that he might rescue him out of their hand and restore him to his father. What a family, am I right? They actually come up with a plan to kill their brother. Now, I can understand being a little annoyed with him. He is kind of arrogant or overconfident or whatever you want to say, but still probably not good to kill him. What kind of a family is this? This is a pretty messed up family. On the farm, we, we, you know, we had a kind of a phrase, be careful which wagon you hitch your tractor to. Now, God promised to bless the world through Abraham and Abraham's family. God hitched God's wagon to Abraham, only to find that this family is pretty dysfunctional. And yet, I think there's also good news in there for all of us, because we all come from kind of dysfunctional families of some sort. And yet, what is God going to do? Abandon the promise? Leave this family and pick somebody else? Well, thankfully, we have a God who keeps promises. And that's why I'm standing at our baptismal font, the place where all kinds of families from all kinds of backgrounds come together and celebrate God's promise of presence, of forgiveness, and of abundant life in Jesus Christ. So, Then Judah said to his brothers, What profit is it if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay our hands on him for he is our brother, our own flesh. And his brothers agreed. When some Midianites traders passed by, they drew Joseph up, lifting him out of the pit and sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver. And they took Joseph to Egypt. When Reuben returned to the pit and saw that Joseph was not in the pit, he tore his clothes. He returned to his brothers and said, the boy is gone and I, where can I turn? Then they took Joseph's robe, slaughtered a goat, and dipped the robe in the blood. They had the long robe with sleeves taken to their father and said, This we have found. See now whether it is your son's robe or not. He recognized it and said, It is my son's robe. A wild animal has devoured him. Joseph is without doubt torn to pieces. Then Jacob tore his garments and put sackcloth on his loins, and mourn for his son many days. 
Joseph has been sold off into slavery in Egypt. He's going to serve as a servant for Potiphar. Now, if you're familiar with the musical or the Bible story, you'll remember that Potiphar's wife tries to frame Joseph and he gets thrown into jail two years later. So Joseph's been in jail for two years. Pharaoh has a dream and Pharaoh needs help interpreting that dream. And they call on Joseph to interpret that dream. And in that dream, Pharaoh was on the banks of the Nile. Seven fat cows come up and feed in the reed grass. Then seven other thin, poor, and ugly cows come up. The thin cows eat the fat cows. And in another dream, Pharaoh saw seven ears of grain full and growing on one stalk, and then seven ears withered and thin sprouting after them. The thin ears swallowed up the good ears. Joseph the dreamer trusted God to interpret these dreams. And he shared that it means that seven years of good crops will be followed by seven years of famine. So Pharaoh makes Joseph his second in command. Joseph is going to work for Pharaoh. He's going to go throughout Egypt and make sure they save up enough grain throughout these seven years to make it through seven years of famine. And it happened just as Joseph interpreted. After seven years, there's a famine. And Pharaoh sends all the hungry people in the land to Joseph, his second in command for food. Now famine spread not just throughout Egypt, but made it all the way to Canaan, where Joseph's family was. Joseph's dad, Jacob, sends some of his sons down to Egypt because they hear there's still food. To make a long story longer, Joseph's brothers get there. They bow down to him just as Joseph saw in his first dream. Joseph was able to help his brothers with grain and after several trips, reveals himself to them as their brother. Now, eventually they brought their father and settled in Goshen near Joseph. The famine would last for five more years and Joseph saw to it that his family was cared for. Jacob eventually dies. But what about Joseph's brothers? Have they changed any? What would those family reunions be like? They lied to their father about Joseph. They betrayed Joseph. How in the world could Joseph ever forgive or start to trust them again? And that brings us to the main point of today's sermon. Realizing that their father was dead, Joseph's brothers said, what if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong that we did to him? So they approached Joseph saying, your father gave this instruction before he died. Say to Joseph, I beg you, forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong they did in harming you. Now therefore, please forgive the crime of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also wept, fell down before him and said, We are here as your slaves. But Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good, in order to preserve a numerous people, as he is doing today. So have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. In this way, he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. So again, Joseph's brothers fall down at his feet like his original dream, no longer begging for food. Now they're begging for reconciliation. They ask Joseph for forgiveness. And his response, Whew, I don't know if I'd be able to say this if I were him. Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good. What do we do with that phrase? Pastor Rolf Jacobson from Luther Seminary says, well, there's two important words here in the Hebrew. That word for intended is chashev. It's the same word as God reckoned Abraham's faith as righteousness. Intend, think, or reckon. God's thought processes are actively shaping God's mission and God's people and the future of the world. Now, a translation I really like for chashev is to weave. As in God weaving God's self and God's story into ours and working to create a more life-giving garment. Can you picture God as a master weaver at the loom, taking the terrible garment we've created and turning it into something more beautiful? And the other word is preserve. Literally in Hebrew, to cause life. God intended it for good in order to give life to numerous people. This was a fulfillment of the promise God made to Abraham and his descendants that they would be a mighty nation, that they would be a blessing for the world. Not just Joseph's family was preserved. 
They were a blessing for the world as people came from all over to get food. So there are some good things that do come out of Joseph's suffering. So let me get this straight. Joseph suffered a lot, but people's lives were saved and therefore everything happens for a reason? Uh, not so fast. God didn't make the brothers throw Joseph in a pit. The brothers are responsible for that. They've sinned. Joseph's suffering in slavery and jail and being estranged from his family, that comes at great cost to him, to his father, to his brothers. That doesn't make the actions of his brothers okay. Pastor Steve shared in our podcast this week a quote from Dr. Gary Simpson. Perhaps God doesn't have a plan, but a promise. A promise, not a plan. God promises life and life abundant. God takes terrible things and brings life out of death, even when human beings do their worst. Now, I have a tailor that I really enjoy going to. I use her a lot because pants my size are hard to find. But also, one time I split my pants. You see, it turns out as I kind of get bigger, it's harder uh, for my clothing to keep up with me at wedding receptions and on dance floors. So I split my pants right down the middle, but I love this because I walk into her shop and I always hold up the torn garment and she looks at me and says, I can work with that. We have a God who says, yep, it's pretty torn. It's pretty messed up. It's pretty broken. You made a mistake. I can work with that. You see, in the beginning, God saw a lump of dirt and said, I can work with that as God breathed life and formed a human. God saw Noah's faithfulness and said, I can work with that. God sees how horrible Jacob and his family are to one another and says, I can work with that. Look what Jesus did with two loaves and five fish. He can work with that. And look what God did with Christ's suffering and death on the cross. God can work with that. And God is working to bring new life. This doesn't mean it will be easy or immediate. Joseph was thrown into a pit and then to jail. But I pray it gives you hope to hear that even on our darkest days or months or years that our God can and is working with whatever we're going through. Our God is weaving God's promise of life and life abundant in Jesus into the very fabric of our lives. Our God is not giving up on us and our God can work with that. Even you, even me. Glory to God. Amen. God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, was suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. 
On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, we've come to the part of our service where we give back to God through our tithes, our gifts, and our offerings. And you know, a lot of people have asked, how, how do we give during this online worship experience? <laughs> oh, glad you asked. So I reached out to our financial director, Darcy Dawson, and she gave me the definitive list on how you can give at Easter right now. First of all, you can just do it the old-fashioned way. Write out a check, drop it in the mail, send it to the church. If you're here in person, there's always offering buckets as you're exiting the parking lot for checks or cash. Um, you know, if you go to the website, easter.org, there's a big button that says give. You can click on there, you can use your credit card, you can give right there. Or, this is what I do. You could reach out to Darcy and set up a Simply Giving account, and it's a recurring payment. So every time I receive a paycheck, automatically it takes my tithe out and sends it right to the church. Then I never have to think about it. That's pretty convenient. There's also text to give. You can see the number right here on the screen. That's really convenient. And then there's also an app called the Give Plus app. If you download that to your device and look for Easter Lutheran Church, you can give through that app. There is also, on the Easter Lutheran Church app, a giving button that you can use. There's publicly traded stock and mutual funds. You can reach out to Darcy about that. And did you know that you can give to Easter Lutheran Church through Amazon Smile and through Thrivent Choice? What? And finally, for those of you who are future thinking, you can do uh, estate gifts that are gifted to the Easter Foundation, a gift that can keep on giving. So are there ways to give during online worship? Oh yes, there are. Because giving to God is a reflection of God's gracious gift of life to us because God gives us all things. So now let us worship our gifts and our offerings. Please pray with me in the offering press. God of compassion, through even our most difficult and dangerous times, you have guided us through your love and grace. We presume grace. you for our, our many gifts, which we now and trust you and your our walk in the world. We ask that these offerings would do good, pre, pre, preserving. preserving life and ensuring. ensuring our futures for all our neighbors. In Jesus' name, amen. Please pray with me. Gracious God, we thank you that you weave your story of mercy, grace, and abundant life into the messes we often create. Thank you for sticking with dysfunctional families and people just like us. Hear us now as we take a deep breath and silently reflect on the hurt, pain, and struggles we have within our own families. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we believe you can work with whatever we bring to you and piece together a future with hope and life. We don't believe that you caused the coronavirus, but we desperately wonder how you are at work to bring something good. Hear our silence as we pause and remember the over 200,000 Americans and nearly 1 million people worldwide who have died from COVID-19. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Powerful God, we see how you bring new life throughout the Bible and our own lives. Bring new life to those affected by wildfires in Western states and those affected by tropical storms and hurricanes in the Gulf Coast. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of grace and mercy, we thank you for the Easter families and children who celebrated their first communion this past week. Thank you that even in the midst of a pandemic, your promise of forgiveness, presence, and grace continues to be something we can touch and experience. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of healing, bring new life to all who are sick in mind, body, or spirit. For Rob Gray, Crystal Nelson, Trent Johnson and family, Jerry Westbrook, Sarah Benedict, Sherry Couch, Lynn Troke, Bive Levinson, Mike Wagner, Cindy Lutz, Jody Taylor, Blanche Bromer, Mona Smith, Kevin Lane, Melinda Martin, Russ Blair, Carmen McShane, and all who live with heightened stress or mental illness, especially during this time. Bring peace to those who grieve the loss of a loved one today. Sylvia Hammer, Sasha Pantrance, Lori Holton, Dan Voy, David Langer, Terry Berger, Melinda Martin, and Matt Everett. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We join our prayers together with the prayers of our partner congregations in Guatemala and Tanzania as we bring our brokenness to you, trusting that you will make a more beautiful and life-giving garment. Hear us as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be our name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
been so good to be together in worship today. And as we leave this space, receive this blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Presence of my soul.